Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. General Motors is trying to get out ahead of this public relations disaster related to that recall of 1.6 million vehicles with ignition switches that can fail. That defect, which can kill the engine and prevent the airbags from going off, has led to 13 fatalities. And as you may have heard us report, General Motors knew about this problem a decade ago, but did nothing about it. GM is now going to offer people who own the affected cars a $500 voucher to buy a new GM vehicle. And it's going to reimburse owners who already paid to fix the switch on their own. This, of course, is not going to satisfy owners or even congressional investigators, but at least it is a first step. Obviously, GM is going to have to take a lot more steps to regain the public's trust, which has been badly damaged. So how much is all of this going to cost? Interestingly, a report from Merrill Lynch says that GM sets aside about $500 for every vehicle it sells just in case of recalls or lawsuits. That comes to $3 billion annually, and right now GM has about $7.2 billion of that recall money on hand. Merrill Lynch estimates this recall will cost about $80 million to repair the vehicles, but that's only to repair them, I say. This will likely cost General Motors hundreds of millions of dollars in lawsuits and legal fees, and I would not be surprised to see its sales take a hit. The UAW is hopping mad at the National Labor Relations Board. The union is appealing its defeat at Volkswagen's plant in Tennessee, claiming that outsiders interfered with and intimidated hourly workers to vote against the union. Yesterday, the NLRB's Atlanta region, which is hearing the appeal, decided to allow groups representing workers who rejected the union to participate in the hearing, including cross-examining witnesses. The UAW says it is an outrage that the NLRB is allowing its opponents to argue their case. On the other side of this argument, Tennessee Senator Bob Corker says it would be an affront to free speech if the anti-union groups were not allowed to be part of the process. Audi just held the media launch of its A3 in the American market. Sean McElroy has this report. Luxury A-segment vehicles are expected to see significant growth over the next several years. And not wanting to be late to the game, Audi just introduced the new A3 sedan. This car has been seven years in the making and is the first Audi ever designed specifically for the U.S. market. We just got some time behind the wheel, and one thing that jumped out at us is the modular infotainment system, which frees up space on the dash so there's not a lot to distract the driver. It's hard to tell from the pictures, but we thought the interior looked a bit jumbled overall, with a bunch of different component textures. It does have a good rear seat head and leg room, and the 220 horsepower 2 liter version we drove performed well. It comes standard with a 170 horsepower 1.8 liter unit. Both engines are mated to a 6 speed dual clutch transmission, with quattro all wheel drive only available on the 2 liter version. The suspension setup on the A3 is very well balanced, handling both everyday and spirited driving very well. Although we found that we had to really dip into the throttle to get it to respond like we thought it should. But most of that was cured after shifting into sport mode. The 1.8 liter will be priced just under $31,000, while the 2 liter starts just under $34,000, including destination charges. The A3 sedan hits showrooms in the spring of this year. Thanks for that report, Sean. Tesla is starting to become more and more of a global car company, and so it just hired Simon Spruill, formerly the director of communications at Renault-Nissan, and a guy who worked directly for Carlos Ghosn. Spruill will now become vice president of marketing and communications at Tesla starting next month. But Tesla is starting to run into roadblocks in trying to circumvent U.S. franchise laws for car dealerships. New Jersey just blocked Tesla and other automakers from selling cars directly to customers. 
You know, Tesla is going to have a big fight on its hands over this issue, and that's probably a key reason why it's trying to push so hard outside of the American market. We recently told you about new developments to get diesel engines to run partly on water. Well, coming up next, we have a report on running diesels on gasoline. There's so much to love about Bridgestone's Dueler tires. The amazing traction, the quiet, comfortable ride, and they're really tough. It's like loving three tires in one. Earlier this week, we showed you how a company called Fierce Fuel Systems is using a process called diesel water emulsion to reduce fuel consumption in big trucks. But that's not the only process being studied. Researchers at Lund University in Sweden have developed a diesel engine that can run on gasoline by modifying the combustion process. Here's a video that the university put together that highlights how it works. President Obama announced plans to tighten fuel efficiency standards for larger U.S. trucks last week. Now, researchers at Lund University in Sweden say their super engine for trucks could be a way to dramatically reduce emissions. So, so the little bit unique feature uh, we're doing in the lab is to run a diesel engine on gasoline. We can look into the combustion process, use advanced laser diagnostics, and by that understanding the combustion as such. A reasonably good engine today would be in the range 40-42% efficient. We're hoping that we could achieve something close to 60% with this PPC type of combustion process. The engine is already one of the world's most efficient. It could have fuel consumption and is so clean it wouldn't require a catalytic converter. So we can get rid of both the soot as well as the NOx at the same time. And we can also use it to get a very, very good efficiency. In Europe, diesel is very, very popular, actually to an extent that we are running out of diesel fuel. So there is a surplus of gasoline and a shortage of diesel fuel. So with this concept, we can actually change the balance and use the gasoline also in an efficient engine. Hey, don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours tonight. Our guest will be Chuck Thomas, Honda's chief engineer for vehicle structure research. You know, how did Honda figure out how to design its cars to meet the Insurance Institute's new small offset crash standard when most other automakers didn't even know the standard was coming? We'll get to the bottom of that tonight, starting live at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Autoline.tv. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching.